Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Evening Devotion was amazing last night. If you have not watched it, please go back and watch it after this. Very encouraging. Okay, let's get into Matthew 5.43. Thou shalt love thy neighbor. And here Jesus is doing... I actually mentioned this the other day. Jesus is clarifying the commandments and how much more specific they are. Not just an outward expression and fulfillment, but an inward. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. And we need to read this in context. One, two, three, four, five. We'll go up to verse 38, retaliation. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. And that, that could mean... Let him slap you on the other side of the face or turn around and walk away. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. Don't deny these people these things. We have a horrible problem with that today. If they sue you for it, let them, let them take it. The Lord will give you double. Verse 41, and whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you. And from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. So if you have it and somebody asks, give it to them. It doesn't matter what they're going to use it for. I've been heavily convicted by this. Because there are times when I'm looking at that person, it's like me giving to them is not going to help them. But you know the Lord says, give, give it. If they ask, give it. If they want to borrow, lend it. Don't worry about it. And so I've changed my behavior due to what he said. Love your enemies. Verse 43. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. <coughs> that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends his rain on the just and the unjust. So let's do good to everyone even if they hate us. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Back then, the tax collector was probably the most hated person. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So what is he telling us? God does these things to those who don't believe in him and curse him. He provides them with stuff. He blesses them. He takes care of them. So we're to do the same thing. So if we're going to take on those attributes of our Father in Heaven, the attributes of our Lord, now that doesn't mean we don't we stop telling the truth. It doesn't mean we stop calling stuff out when we see that it's wrong. We just do good. Figure out what the good thing, to, the right thing to do is and do it. Not from our perspective, but from God's perspective. So thou shalt love thy neighbor, the devotion says, love thy neighbor. Perhaps he rolls in riches, and thou art poor, and living in thy little cot or cottage side by side with his lordly mansion. Thou seest every day his estates, his fine linen, and his sumptuous banquets. God has given him these gifts. God has given him these gifts. The rich people in our world today, they're not rich because of them. They're rich because of God. Think about that. They're not rich because of themselves. They're rich because of God. The poor in this world, they're not poor because of themselves. They're poor because of God. I've seen two individuals invest in the same investments. One come out broke, one come out doing good. That's God. Covet not his wealth, and think no hard thoughts concerning him. Be content with thine own lot, if thou canst not better it. But do not look upon thy neighbor, and wish that he were as thyself. Love him, and then thou wilt not envy him. Be happy for those who are rich. People hate Trump because he's rich. I'm happy for him. I'm glad he's rich. I don't want to be rich. Too much complication. He has the mentality for it. He can handle it. All these other people, I'm glad they're rich. For some people, that may, may be the only enjoyment they have in life. It may be the only consolation they have. Perhaps, on the other hand, thou art rich. 
and near thee reside the poor. Maybe instead of you being the poor one, you're actually the rich one. You're rich in the Lord. He's not. Do not scorn to call them neighbor. Own that thou art bound to love them. The world calls them thy inferiors. And what are they inferior? They are far more thine equals than thine inferiors. For God hath made of one blood all people that dwell upon the face of the earth. We cannot look down on any other person. Because God made us all the same. It is thy coat which is better than theirs. But thou art by no means better than they. They are men. And what art thou more than that? Take heed that thou love thy neighbor, even though he be in rags or sunken in the depths of poverty. But perhaps you say, <coughs> excuse me, but perhaps you say, I cannot love thy neighbor, my neighbors. Because for all I do, they return ingratitude and contempt. So much the more room for the heroism of love. Wouldst thou be a feather bed warrior instead of bearing the rough fight of love? He who dares the most shall win the most. And if rough be thy path of love, tread it boldly, still loving thy neighbors through thick and thin. There's a saying that goes along with what he said. He who dares the most shall win the most. Let's see. There we go. Heap coals of fire on their heads. And if they be hard to please, seek not to please them, but to please thy master. And remember, if they spurn thy love, thy master hath not spurned it. And thy deed is as acceptable to him as if it had been acceptable to them. Love thy neighbor, for in so doing thou art following the footsteps of Christ. Now, don't get it wrong. Because I know right away somebody can misunderstand and say, so even though my neighbor is this, this, and this, and this, and they do all these things, I'm supposed to be kind to them and just endure that kind of stuff? No, if they're doing you that wrong, you don't have nothing to do with them. Especially if they're mocking you, preaching false Jesus, and that the Bible says, mark and avoid, stay away from people like that. There's no requirement for you to endure that kind of stuff with those people. But if you are in that position, then you endure it and you love them, regardless of who they are and, and what they're doing and the things that they have more than you. Be happy for them. But don't join in with them with their evil deeds. Don't associate yourselves with that. But we would be happy to be happy for others who are doing better than we are. <sighs> Envy is a killer. The green monster of envy and jealousy are killers. They will just hollow a person out on the inside. So if somebody has more than us, good for them. I'm glad I'm glad you have more. Because it's making your life easier and you've got a lot more going on. You need it. Oh, but what about you? What about me? I have everything I need. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about having more. Don't you want a better life? I have a great life. I have more than you could possibly imagine. Because this life isn't about riches. It's not about things. It's not about stuff. This life is about God. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about glorifying him. And so if we don't have as much as everybody else in this life, who cares? Who cares? Because what we have on the other side is far greater than anyone can acquire here. Far greater. What we have in this life is far greater than what anybody could have in this world. Salvation through Jesus Christ. It will only be on the day when final judgment is done that people will fully realize. There will be many that will, at that point will fully realize the mistake they've made. I wanted all these worldly things and it did nothing for me. Because now here I realize these things are worthless. It was salvation that I desperately needed. It was Jesus Christ that I desperately needed. And I remember all them people that came up and talked to me and told me about it, and I didn't listen to them. It's only then that they will realize the real terror of the mistake they made. Society says we should have a lot of things. No, it's a waste of time. It's too much to maintain. Better to have less. Better to have less.
Because the more you have, the more your attention is pulled away from the Lord. The more your attention is drawn to those things, the more time you have to dedicate to managing those things that are not to have anything to do with it. <clears throat> Keep it simple. Then it lo loosens up more of your time and attention to dedicate to the Lord. Because he should be our central focus anyway. But if people we know have good things, be happy for them. Bless them. We had some friends that inherited a bunch of money. And uh, at one point, especially when COVID got really bad, they stopped hanging out with us. Loosely. Uh, and we're hanging out with other people that had money like they did. Because that's what a lot of people will tell you. If you got money, you have to change your friends. You have to hang out with friends that have money. And they did that. And so we pretty much got pushed off to the side and didn't hear from them anymore. Well, the one, the, the wife, me and my wife's, my wife and her and his wife were really close. Um, and so she, my wife was hurt when she did that. Because she thought they were really good friends. Um, she got very, very sick and ended up with a bunch of health issues and it was killing her. We were the only people that went over there to help and take care of her. None of the other friends would come. Nobody else would come and help. And even the family wouldn't come and help. I think one or two maybe, but we were the only ones that were willing to come and help. And before she died... She told her, her, her daughters, because we watched the kids grow up, but we'd known them that long. She told her daughters, these people are true friends who will stick by you no matter what. I treated her bad. I treated my friend badly and she's still here. That's loving your neighbor. That's loving somebody even if they treat you badly. It's doing the right thing no matter what. Somebody does something and does you wrong or somebody treats you badly when they need and they are in need and they need help, you're there for them. And that can be family or friend, whoever it is. That's what loving your neighbor looks like. I can't stand that person. I cannot believe they've treated me this way. I can't believe the things that they've said about me and I heard them with my own ears. And now they won't even contact me or talk to me. I don't get invited over or anything anymore. But now that I know that they need, I'm going to go and offer any help that I can offer. Because that's the right thing to do. In my life, I have had times where I've done that and it has been pushed away. But most of the time, it's, re it's readily accepted. And most of the time, the people are very thankful. You are an actual friend. Because of all the other people that I know, none of them have showed up to help. None of them have come over and offered. None of them have even said anything. When you get sick and injured, you find out who your true friends are. I can't tell you how many times I've had... Because I have this disease tearing me up. I've been outside the last couple of days and I'm dying. It hurts. I've had a bunch of people offer, we'll come give you a hand. Hey, man, you know what? I actually owe you some time. I'll come out and I'll help you with your place. Nothing. Not a single person. Not a single offer fulfilled. When you're sick, when you're down, when you're struggling, most of the time, most people won't come and help you. But the Lord tells us to be the people that will do that. And to follow through on what we say. I said I would be here. I'll be here. I used to get chastised for that at my church. Well, if you're feeling sick, why are you here? Because I said I would be here. So we are to love our neighbor. And that can be family, that can be friend, that can be whoever, but love our neighbor. Sometimes they won't allow us to do it, but it is what it is. But if, we, if there's an opportunity, we're to do it. 
the person on the underpass, the overpass rather, the person on the corner with the sign, the person that nobody talks to or they never talk to nobody else when their car won't start, somebody on the side of the road needing a tire changed, you name it. Everybody is our neighbor. So if we have the ability to help, let us help. If it's within our power to do something, let us do something and show that Christian love. And when they ask, when your enemy asks, why are you here? What, what, what's made you decide it? What are you trying to get out of this? Nothing. But why would you, I mean, we don't, we don't like each other. Why would you come over here? Because God said, Jesus Christ said, I'm to love my neighbor. I'm supposed to do stuff like this because it's the right thing to do. And so I'm here doing this. Because whether or not we agree, I love you because you're a fellow human being. You're my neighbor. That's enough to break the stone off a person's heart. And cause them to look more closely at this thing we call Christianity. And just maybe, just maybe that's enough to get them to go to the Lord for salvation. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and to sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word. Thank you for this devotion. We forget a lot of times, especially today now with the way things are, just how bad it can be between people and, and, and how much they struggle. Because when a person hits rock bottom, that's when everybody disappears. And how valuable it is to be that neighbor or that friend or that family member who says, we disagree on a lot of things, but you're still a human and need help, and I'm here to help you with whatever you need. We miss a lot of these opportunities because of life, things that change. You know that, Lord. You know how, how it is. So right away, I ask that you forgive us those missed opportunities. But Lord, I pray that you make us aware of future opportunities and that if, it's, if it is in our power to do something, to, to do something, whether they like us or we like them or whatever is irrelevant, that we'll help them, we'll do something. Because one minute of being a good neighbor destroys an innumerable amount of bad feelings. What I found personally is that a lot of people, they don't like that. They don't, for some reason, they have some really weird aversion of people helping them. And so they feel like they have to pay and all that kind of stuff. I, I, that's not why I'm, we're doing this. I don't know where that mentality is coming from, Lord. I still haven't figured that one out completely. It's weird to me. I keep having to reiterate, I'm happy to help, but I have the ability. I'm happy to do it. So it's one of those things where we have to take each situation individually. But Lord, may we be able to do this, even now with the way things are and how, how people are, may we be able to help others. And be a good neighbor. And show people your glory in the acts and the good good works that we do towards each other, towards our fellow man. In this day and age, it's hard to find that. It's hard to, to grasp that. It's hard to get that and, and, and people to see it visibly. It's usually hidden and covered up by news media and all that garbage. People over, over talk about it. But Lord, we know this is still what we are to, still what we are to do. <coughs> So help us to see that and understand and do that. It's, it's to glorify your name. Bring honor to the name of Jesus Christ. So Lord, help us to do that. With no preconceived ideas or thoughts, but just to do that. To be a blessing to others. If it's within our power to do so. To use what you've given us to be a blessing to others. What good are we if we don't show your love being shed abroad in our hearts to others? What advertisement is there for 
getting saved if we're not showing what you are doing in us, the change. So Lord, make us to do that. Make us to be a blessing, thereby being a blessing to you. If we're a blessing to others, we're a blessing to you too. And to glorify your name in any and all acts we can in our daily lives. Today I have to go into town and buy some stuff, fix a water line, run errands. Lord, I pray that you help me to recognize those opportunities when I can show Christian love. And maybe a door will open, I can share the gospel with somebody. Or even just mention my Lord's name. That it may convict a heart, plant a seed, or turn somebody around and send them back to you. In Jesus' name, we thank you for your mercy and grace, your great love, your free gift of salvation. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you, we praise you, we honor you and glorify you. In, in his mighty name we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. I apologize. I'm really tired from yesterday. But these opportunities are always around us. Now, sometimes... Sometimes it's not going to happen. Sometimes you're just not going to be able to help it. They're just pushback. When my neighbor next to me died here, me and him were have been friends since we moved out here. And he was really sick and I offered to help. But for some reason, his daughter just cannot stand us. And I've never said more than 20 words to her in 20 years. And so that she's got that whole family thinking we're horrible people. So... Um, I never was allowed to help. I wanted to, but I never was allowed to. And so sometimes you can't. Sometimes you're just not going to be allowed to do it. It is what it is. But if there's an opportunity, take it. Just don't be forceful about it. Just just let it happen. And the Lord will show you. He'll unfold it. But these are great opportunities to share the truth with others. These are great opportunities to show actual what actual love looks like. And when if a person is at the end of their life and they see that, that can be enough to turn them around. That can be enough to cause them to go another direction. We've watched more than our share, our fair share of people that we know die. And on several of those occasions, I was able to share a bit of the Bible when my friend Carol died, I was rubbing her feet. Everybody else was just sitting there watching her watching her die. And I was rubbing her feet because, you know, whenever you're in that kind of situation, there's nerves in the bottom of the feet. And when you press in certain spots, it actually causes a euphoric state. It releases negative energies. It releases tension. And so they relax more and they're more comfortable. She was in a lot of pain. She had... Um, uh, not... Was it pancreatic cancer? I forget which one it was now. Incurable. And it uh, took her two weeks to, to the day. So, um, but I was telling her about how beautiful God was. Of course, I had a whole room full of people. I'm hoping it maybe had an impact on some of them. But I, I'm, I was telling her that whenever Moses was on Mount Sinai, and God said, Moses, I'm going to let you see me, but my glory I'm, my glory is so strong, so powerful, so beautiful that if, to see it, your mortal body is going to kill your mortal body. So I'm going to put my hand over your face so you can't see it. And I'll fly by and then you can see my back. That You can handle that glory. And that's because his face shone so brightly with his beauty and his love that for Moses in a physical condition he was in, it, it would cause his body to stop functioning. That's how beautiful God is. That's how powerful he is. And he offers us to see that through Jesus Christ. It was a great opportunity. The whole room was dead quiet. But she was smiling. She's laying there and she was smiling. And so she heard me. It was a great opportunity. And then I spent six months of my life, me and my wife, living out there, taking care of her place while her daughter, who's a horrible human being, uh, was trying to figure it out because nobody nobody else was available and nobody else knew what to do with the horses. We did. And so we were taking care of 26 horses and a bunch of cats and some other stuff. I fixed the place up. I repaired a bunch of things. Made it look better. Cleaned it all up. Looked like a park. 
Still got the pictures from it. Look at our park. Sometimes we get these opportunities and we can do wonderful, wonderful things with it and show people what real Christian love looks like. It doesn't always win people over. Sometimes they actually look more negatively upon you, like my friend's daughter did. But sometimes everybody will be like these such wonderful people. Where they go with it after that, I don't know. <laughs> but if we have that opportunity, let us take it. It is a great thing. If we have a chance to do something good like that, let us do it. If we have a chance to fix a lawnmower, fix a meal. You guys want to eat? We're cooking. Come on over. Y'all don't have time working? Come on over. You can eat at our house. You never know. Those kind gestures can really, really have an effect on people. Now, again, keep in mind, the day and the age that we're in, as close as we are to things and the way things are going, you're not going to have, you may not run into a lot of success. However, I will tell you, there have been a few, more than a few testimonies in the comments of people having great success. The, the Lord's, Lord is using them with great effect to change others. And it is amazing and it is incredible to be a part of that. To hear that and to know the Lord is still working no matter what. So let us be diligent in this. Just like everything else the Lord has told us to do. And to wait for those opportunities. We don't have to force it, just watch. And he'll bring us to them. And all we have to do is, do is step through the door and offer whatever help we can offer. And show them what real love is for a fellow human being looks like in Jesus Christ. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.